Hello, this morning, Benny Lehan and Bonnie Dietrich and I are sitting in the Hillcrest community room, and today we are interviewing Pauline Candela Valente for the Women's History Month. And we're going to uh, start with just a little story that I have to tell you about Pauline. Uh, Pauline works at the Stop and Shop in Foxboro, and I was going to the line one day, and I was buying an enormous bag of dog food. And I was worried because uh, Pauline was going to have to lift it out of the carriage and, and, and all of that. And she said, oh, don't worry about it. And she picked that big bag of dog food up, put it on the, on the conveyor belt and said, I was raised on a farm. I'm a farm <laughs> girl. I know how to do this. <laughs> so we're going to start with a question, Pauline, of how long you've lived here and where did you grow up in Norfolk? I or, okay. Where did you grow up? I, grew, I, I, I was born in East Boston, and my father moved out here to Norfolk because he was a World War I soldier, and he used to come out to Pond for rehab. So they told him to move out, so they picked up my mother and he bought a farm, because she wasn't happy, but that was all right. And so I grew up on Middle Street, he bought the farm next to the old City Mills schoolhouse, because that schoolhouse had seven grades, oh. four, three in the first, first three, and then four grades and the other ones. See, one teacher used to teach the three grades, and the other teacher used to teach the four grades. They all took turns. Oh my goodness. I know, imagine doing that. That's amazing. You saved yeah. a lot, I'll tell you, when I think about it, you know. Yeah, what did your, what did your uh, father raise on the farm? Well, he had, he had chickens, a lot of chickens. And then he used to, where he worked, he had the barber shop in Boston. He used to bring the eggs into Boston and sell them to the market. Yeah. Oh, now how would he get from here to Boston then? Oh, he had a, an old Model T Ford. <laughs> oh, cool. oh yeah. Cool. And he would sell all his eggs then down in Boston. Well, yeah, because he'd bring them to the market and, mm -hmm. and then they'd give him the market price. You know? Oh, that's interesting. Now, and, uh, and why did he go to the rehab? Huh? Tell us why he went to the rehab. He, he was in the First World War and he was gassed. Oh. Uh, yeah. And so they, they and that's how we happened to come in Napa because Pondville Hospital was a rehab for World War One soldiers. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that. So that 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 I know, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so of course my mother was a city girl, right. so he takes my mother out. He totally bought a farm because at that time, the Italian man was he, he was he was the head of the household. The uh -huh. wife really didn't have a say. Because us kids growing up, after we got married, she says, you children are so lucky, she says, you can voice your opinion. <laughs> Which we could, because when I got married, we used to go to my mother's house every Sunday for dinner, you know? And if my husband says something, I, I could contradict them without yeah. any problem. She thought it was great. <laughs> <laughs> she was ahead of her time. Right. So women have come a long oh, way. Yeah. <laughs> and, so I mean, it was really cute because my mother, when I used to take a shopping every week up to Franklin to the Italian store, she used to say, you know, Paula, you're awful lucky. And I said, why? She says, you can answer your husband back. He says, we couldn't, which is true. That's the way they were brought up. Now they were both, your, both your parents were born in Italy. Yeah, they were both, and in Italian, the man was the head of the household. Right. Whatever he said went early, you know. And then, of course, when I got married, I used to voice my opinion in front of him, you know. And my mother thought it was great. <laughs> yeah. Now, did you speak Italian at home, or did uh, they, your parents No, speak my it? mother taught me Italian. <clears throat> in fact, I was the only one, you know. Uh huh. Because the other kids started going to school, so. So she said, she wanted us to speak to her in English so she could learn, and that's what we had to do. Right, yeah. right. We would correct her, or whatever the case may be. See, my father was born in Italy, but mm -hmm. he was in the First World War, mm -hmm. so he learned to read and write. Yeah, right, yeah, right. Because he went to mm -hmm. night school. Did he um, enlist for the U.S.? Or yeah, for, for the U.S. Oh, okay. For the U.S. Yeah. Now, how many children did you have in your family? How many well, siblings? I was the oldest of nine. Oldest wow. of nine. And believe me, I did a lot of work. Well, I was the oldest. My brother Louis, he, I was 20 years old when he was born. He was the last one. And I more or less brought him up because every time he fell down, he didn't go to my mother. He went to me because my mother said, Polly, go pick Louie up. Polly, go do this. Polly, go do that. <laughs> <laughs> what else were you going to do? Because I was born, then my mother had three boys. Uh -huh. 
Oh, and, and, and so and she, she depended on you yeah, because and she was so always what daughter. happened is that boys in the Taylor family are number one because they carry the name. Oh. And that's what I used to hear. And it's true. It isn't. My mother thinks today it's wonderful. What she thought it was the days when we were growing up that they could have their say, the women, which they couldn't. They couldn't then. Well, right. What are you going to do? Right. So how many brothers and how many sisters then? Okay, they, they, were, they were five girls and four boys. Five girls and four, four boys. boys. So I was the oldest, and then the boy Frankie came after me, and my brother, my brother Julie ended up being in charge of the school lunch program for, uh, for Massachusetts. Yeah, oh, that, oh, yeah. Because wow. he would, he went in the service, and when he came out, he loved cooking. So what happened is that I used to love to stay outdoors, and he used to love to stay in the kitchen with my mother, ah. and I loved it because I mean I could be outdoors. Right. So, so that's how we started into cooking. So when he went in the service and he got out, he went to cooking school. Uh huh. My goodness. And then he got a job with, with Massachusetts, and he, be, he was in charge of the school lunch program for Massachusetts. Wow. He did very well for himself. That He's passed nice. away since, you know, but yeah. Very yeah. good. And do you have a special meals that you remember, that you enjoy, that your no, mother would Italian in fact, meals? He, he, of course, my mother always cooked Italian, right? Right. And so then when he went to school, he'd come home and he'd say, Hey, Mom, I'm going to make you an American dish. And she says, go ahead. She told me, she said, be my guest. You know, to her, it was great, you know. Oh, okay, for a day. So he, he, taught her, he taught her how to, what you call it, a lot. Because, see, she couldn't read or write, so mm -hmm. people had to show her. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, what how interesting. Yeah. Did, did, what, did, what was some of the produce that you used to grow well, on that? Did my, you grow, have father, a garden? And well, see what happened. There was these two English fellows who lived across the street where my father bought the farm, mm -hmm. okay? And they never married, but they came from England. And they did all that stuff. They taught my father. Oh, yeah. how to farm. Yeah, right. Oh, my. Yeah, they were, they were, the, they were the Kelly boys, the Frank and, uh, what you call it, uh, George Kelly, right? Uh -huh. And they lived across the street from us. And when they got sick, my mother used to take care of them because, I mean, they had nobody. They oh, came from nice. England. Right, yeah. right. And uh, she used to bring them with soup, you know, and something like that. They wanted to leave her the house when, they, when uh, George died first and Frank was left all alone. He, uh, he wanted to leave my mother the house and she says, no, she says, that's not mine. So the town of Norfolk got that homestead. Oh, okay. yeah, that's what happens in a case like that. And know? that was right on Myrtle, Myrtle Street, on Myrtle right across Street. the street. Right and then the, the City Mill School was right next door to my mother, mm -hmm. see? So yeah. I didn't have to walk far to go that's, for seven that's years. That's good. That is good. Did yeah, but I, go? as a kid, I wanted to go on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> but some of the other women have told us about those buses, <laughs> and, you know, that they had to take the well, bus. Well, see, Walter Holmes used to have the old bus. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's and now his boys in charge, you know. Right. 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 Yeah. So, but did you have, did you enjoy living on a farm though? Oh, because yeah, you said I, you liked it outdoors. Did you yeah, like? Yeah, I liked the outdoors. I was an outdoor person. Because mm -hmm. I mean, I took up a lot of sports when I went to school. Right? Oh, what yeah. sports? Tell us what sports. I, I, uh, basketball and, and what, because we went to Walpole, don't forget. Yes. Right, oh, that's yeah. right. For, for high school, you went yeah. to Walpole. And uh, I took up field hockey, you know, and all that. They had sports for girls? That oh, yeah, field hockey was beautiful. I loved that. Oh, really? Yeah. And then we learned to play baseball, softball, really. The way. Uh -huh. yeah. Did you play just amongst yourselves, or no, did you go no. against another school? Uh, other towns. Like we Alabama played Norwood, Needham. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, but the only thing is that what happened is that I, I lived in Norfolk, and I had to find my own way home. After, yes. if we played at another school. Right. So I found out that there was a fellow that used to come through uh, Walpole. They used to go right through City Mills to go to Franklin. So he picked me up to take me home. Oh, <laughs> well, that was lucky. Yeah, yeah I was. That was very lucky. Because we, my father didn't have a car then, you know. Right, right. So, so then, so you, you actually had sports after school. Oh, that, yeah, just yeah. Like yeah. They played other teams. School. Yeah. And you play. Then how would you get to the other schools? Did oh, the with school the bus. bus yeah, the bus was the bus. provided for yeah. you from Walpole. That's wonderful. Because I graduated from Walpole High, see? Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
What positions did you play? Do you remember the yeah. position? Yeah, right wing. Because right I, wing. Because I could run. <laughs> <laughs> but you must have had a good shot, right? I had a beautiful shot. <laughs> <laughs> and then you played basketball too? Yeah, but I was the keen on it. I mean, I, I, I played it whenever they needed me, you know. But, right. Uh, but I, I liked field hockey, though. I thought it was great. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. And did you play softball too, or no? Yeah, I did. Because yes. then we, then the city mills, we had a softball team because then that I was, we were living in the city mills section of right. Black Rock, right? And we had a softball team, Stevie Cog got us all together, you know? And I used to be third base because I could run, so. Amazing. Now who would coach, who would coach your, your teams? Were they? Uh, it was Stevie Cog. Stevie Cog. He came Car. to the Franklin. Mm -hmm. He was, he was a mailman. And uh, he's the one that got the team together, see? Oh, how yeah. nice. So we used to go everywhere. So we were the City Mills ACs, the athletic <laughs> club. <laughs> that is wonderful. Yeah. That is wonderful. Well, I've got good memories, uh, you know, now fuck, and mm -hmm. I can't complain. Right. And then, of course, my, my father learned how to be a farmer because, mm -hmm. like I said, the Kelly boys taught him a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Because he was a barber by trade. Right. And he used to take the train to Boston, uh, mm -hmm. to the barber shop, and right. then come back, you know. Right. And then we had a station in City Mills years ago. Yeah. Right, there yeah. was a station. Yeah. Somebody else had yeah. mentioned that to us. So we lived right down the street from the mm -hmm. station, right? Middle yeah. Street. So do you remember, um, do you have any fond memories of anything special that took, happened in Norfolk? Was there any uh, parades or anything that you no, remember? No, yeah, I'll tell you, the only, the only problem that we had in Napa is that I couldn't play with the Protestant children because I was Catholic. And my, my father, my father was a barber, so he gave everybody a haircut. Right. And he didn't bring us up to be that way, you know. Mm -hmm. And I told him one day uh, uh, that I had got to play with this girl I went to school with and the mother sent me home. And that she says, uh, you Catholic? And I said, yeah. She said, you Italian? I said, no. I said, I'm American because I was born here because my father brought us up that way. And so she says, well, you're not playing with my daughter. So I got home. My father said, I thought you told me you were going to stay at a girl's house. So mm -hmm. I said, I, I told him. And he says, don't say anything. He said, but your day will come. Right. Well, and, and, and this is true. That's the, because he was a barber. He gave everybody a haircut. Right. And that's the way he brought us up. That, we were in America, right? right? And so what happened is that it's true because this girl that I chummed around with, she married an Irish boy and she turned Catholic for him. <laughs> so I mean, you know, those things happen. Yes, and yeah. aren't we, we're very glad things have changed today. Yeah, very, yeah, very a lot of things, things have changed. changed. But at that time, it was, those things happened. Right, yeah. Right. Very now, much. what are some of your recollections of what Norfolk was like then and, and how it has changed Change. over the years. Well, the thing is that I, I think it was a real, it was a real Protestant town, really, mm -hmm. when you come down to it, you know? And they, they, had, they had a lot of Republicans here, because my father told me that years after, you know? And, and I, I think, I don't know, but I, we never made anything of it. I think mean, my, my brother Julie married a Protestant girl. My father never said a word. I mean, my mother never would anyway because she came from Italy and she figured that she always considered herself a dumb dog because she couldn't read or write. Aww. I said to her, you got more up here than the ones that read and write. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as the way the town has evolved, you know, do you here you grew up on a farm. Is that farm still a working farm where you No, grew? my brother lives there. No. Okay. They, they just probably planted a few things for themselves, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. But don't forget my father my mother used to put up a hundred jars of tomatoes. Wow. That's a lot wow. of jars. Yeah. Yeah, and I peeled but a you lot had of a lot them. of people to feed. <laughs> yeah, so yes, exactly. that too. I peeled a lot of them really. Oh I bet. I bet. In fact I still have two or three bags of the uh, the jars <laughs> in, <laughs> in the closet. Okay. <laughs> But, you, but that's what we did. I mean, yeah. it, that's the way it was growing up. Norfolk was, I mean, when I started working in Boston, I used to take the train in because I worked at Back Bay. I was working for a lawyer because I went to night school to learn shorthand and typing. That's what oh. I wanted, right? Mm -hmm. And so I worked for a lawyer there in Back Bay. And uh, what you call it? 
They said, where do you come from? Nafwa. Oh, Nafwa, Virginia. I said, no, Nafwa, bad. <laughs> They're still saying it. Yeah. They're still saying it. And, and then I'd say, uh, no, Nafwa, where the heck is that? I said, you know where the Walpole State Prison is? They said, yeah. I spread next door. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. I mean, they didn't know where it was. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was a real old country town. Yeah. Right. Well, did you, a lot of some of the other women have explained that they did a lot of socializing. Uh, there were a lot of activities oh, well, in, the town, in, the, in the town that they could enjoy. Yeah. And they felt very safe. Yeah. Very safe in the town. That well, they could was. walk and they could leave their doors open. And My mother never closed her doors. Hmm. Never. She didn't even have a key to that, I think, to the door, really. Mm -hmm. We'd go out and that's it. Right? Yeah. And they, and they must have uh, must have been a nice feeling to it have is. that. It was a, a good feeling. So you um, you ended up getting married and staying in Norfolk. Yeah, well, I married married a boy from Franklin. Okay. Yeah, and the, I lived in Franklin for a while, okay. you know. And then we came back to Norfolk. So. Yeah. So, so how many children did you have? Huh? How many children? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> is that one? Oh, that's <laughs> But the only reason is that I got operated on, so oh. I couldn't have any more. Oh. 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 They don't say to me, your mother had nine, and you ended up with one? And I said, well, that's the way it was meant to be, but what am I going to say, right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, you right. must have loads of nieces and nephews. Oh, plenty. Then. There's yeah. plenty around, yeah. 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 You have plenty of them living within Norfolk, or a lot of oh, your Walpole, family? Walpole, yeah. Walpole. Walpole. yeah. Well, we know the name Candela. That's huh? There are a lot of candelas. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, so, are you related to um, the teacher that the candela? She, she would be. Yeah, Linda. that's my sister in law. She's married to my youngest brother, yes, Louis. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Linda, she came from Rentham. But see, her mother was a school teacher too in Rentham. Uh -huh. so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, do you remember, um, you said that your father did have a car, but did you do a, have to walk places? Oh, we used, to, we used to walk three and a half miles to church every Sunday morning. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. we had to go to St. Mary's in uh, Franklin, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In fact, that's where I got married, because that's where I got my first communion and, mm -hmm. and confirmation, mm -hmm. right? And we had to get up. We had, Eight o'clock, we didn't have my mother get us all ready. Okay, go to church. So we did. Then we used to teach Sunday school, and then we come home. Oh, that's wonderful. Then in the afternoon, she'd give us a dime and two pennies, and we'd walk all the way up to the theater up in Franklin. <laughs> Imagine paying a dime. I <laughs> know, it's never. But nice. I mean, that's the way it was then. When you come down to it, you know. For a movie. For a movie. The movies, yeah, yeah. Oh, and wow. the Moss Theater. Yeah. That was a big treat for us, you yeah. know. Wow. Yeah. And that's no longer there, that No, theater. that's no, gone. They took yeah. that down. Yeah, yeah we used to pay a dime. My mother used to give us a dime. She gave us two pennies because Bottlets and Fails had a lot of penny candy. So all us kids would buy, like say, if you had six for a penny, we'd, we'd buy that and somebody else would buy it. Then we'd swap. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, in other words, I'll give you two of mine, you give me two of y'all, what you want. And all, that's yeah. how we did it. Yeah. 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 Did you ever come into the center to the man store? Oh, man store, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I knew, I, I knew him because he. Then I, I went to a night school and I ended up being a banker. I went oh, for a bank. Oh, okay. And so then what happened is that they, they opened up the South Shore Bank up here at Man's Corner. Yes. And that's how I happened to know him. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That was after a good many years. Yes, ago. later. Do you remember some of the other women have talked about the centennial celebration in Norfolk? Do you yeah, no, I, no, I don't remember. I didn't. I didn't get into that because I mean I, I was I was busy floating around from <laughs> the different uh, the branches of the bank, right? Right. Yeah. Right. So you were busy. I became working. a floating manager, which I like. Oh. Yeah. In other words, if somebody was out sick or on vacation, I'd be the one to go, you know. Okay. They used to pay me mileage to go. The mm -hmm. bank did, right. Mm -hmm. So how long of a career did you have in banking? Oh, oh, oh I, I retired from them. I had oh. over 20 years. Oh, wow. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. So I get a good pension from them today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I can't complain. So you would, you would float for, as a teller? To uh, the as a manager. As a manager, yeah, different, and, yeah. and how large an area did you go to? I mean, well, like we had Walpole to, and, yeah, well, we had 30 branches. 
Oh my. Yeah, because they were in Wellesley and they were in Needham. The South Shore Bank was all over, right? Mm. Then Bank of America took over. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, the South Shore started and the Bank of America, it's because I get my pension today from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh, that's amazing. Huh? That is amazing. You did a lot in, in uh, working. Oh, that's, yeah. That's... I thought it was great because I met so many people in different branches. So then you you had to, uh, you started going to St. Jude's when St. Jude's was oh, yeah. first built. Oh, yeah. So you remember it uh, being built and, and oh, yeah. started? We never thought, because I mean, there, was, there wasn't that many Catholics here. Right. You know what would happen is the ones that lived in City Mills used to go to St. Mary's in Franklin. The ones that lived in Pondville used to used to go to Walpole, right? Okay. And then the other, and when they lived in, uh, near Medfield. See, the, the, whatever the town mm -hmm. you lived, yeah, that's where they would go to the Catholic Church, really. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody mentioned that there was, before St. Jude's was built, there was one be up on a hill. I um, it was in the main store. It was in the main store, and then the... Oh, well, we had our first... Your uh, first mass. Service. Yeah, mass, 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 mass at man store. Okay. Right. That's, that's what the they The priest said. used to come up from... Uh, uh, was it well, well, he can. I don't know, one of the, one of the area priests, mm -hmm. and say Mass for us on a Sunday. Okay. Yeah, so that was... Good. And then they built the... Then Saint they built St. Jude, because he mm -hmm. St. Jude is known as the impossible saint. It is, and, and the reason is, they thought it was going to be impossible to have a Catholic church in our <laughs> But not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. That, that's cute. So that, that church has also grown. Huh? That church has also grown quite a bit. Oh, yeah, it has. Now, can you tell us, um, is, is your child, uh, did you have a boy or a girl? You I had a boy. I had a boy. Yeah. Yeah. Is he living close by? Yeah, or? he lives in Franklin. Uh-huh. Yeah, and he got married and he's got two boys, so. Oh, well, that's nice. wonderful. Yeah. So you have two grandsons. Yeah, two grandsons. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. They're Very... doing all right, too. Yeah. That's good. That's, a, that's a, a nice to have, too. Yeah. And boys, so you're used to boys, I'm aren't used you? to boys, <laughs> right. You know, I think it's so amazing, we're not going to divulge your exact age, but that you are able to still go to work and oh, yeah. lift up these heavy, I mean, that's, well, that's I, I wonderful. Mean, you have to do for yourself then. Don't forget, I was the oldest, and then my, my father had the three boys, right? Now the boy that was... After me, his name was Joseph. He was born, like we say, he was born crippled. His, his head grew like a, uh, in the, when his body stayed like a baby. Oh. Yes, and so we, my, when my mother was having more children, the, uh, uh, they told her that she had to put him away. Mm -hmm. She didn't want to, but she wanted to take care of him. So they, they put him in, in Boston in the uh, hospital for crippled children. Mm -hmm. And he lasted there about seven years, and then he passed away. He oh, got pneumonia, oh, yeah, which was a blessing because she, she was heartbroken, you know. Yeah, so yeah, right. But well, then she had went on and had many healthy children after that. Oh, that she had plenty then. <laughs> yes, she did. She had quite a then, bit. Then I could tell you this because it's cute because she said uh, I ended up with one, right? Then I had a couple miscarriages. And, she says, Chief Paula, you were smart. You must have said no to your husband all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Take that out of here. What a fabulous relationship it sounds like you had with your mother, though. Uh oh, well, I was the oldest, don't forget, so yeah. I had to do a lot. The thing is that with her, she felt so bad that she couldn't read or write. And so if anything came up, she'd always have to call me, even after I got married, you know. Yeah, yeah but, she depended on me. But it was funny. Yeah. yeah. Now, did My you... husband used to laugh like anything because he said, Polly, I can't because, see, his mother was born here and she went to school here, so she could do all those things. My mother thought it was great that they could, you know. Mm. But see, in Italy, they were brought up that they were second in, in any family because the Italian man was number one. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, did your parents live on the farm until they passed away? My parents lived up the farm, yeah. yeah. Until yeah. they passed away. My mother was because he lived, had a house in East Boston. He had his barber shop in East Boston, right? Mm -hmm. Now, have you, so you have seen a lot of changes as far oh, as buildings yeah, and, and This everything. place was, when, 
when I, I was living down the Cape, because I retired down there, and my son wanted me to come back up here, and he said, uh, he was living with Frank, he said, gee, my mom, I'll make an apartment over the garage. I said, no, 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 I'll find my own place. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'll watch every move I make. Exactly. <laughs> so anyway, um, what you call it? Uh, oh, my niece lived in Walpole, and she's, I was talking to her, and she said, Oh, Auntie says, I do housework up at the Hillcrest. I said, where is that? She said, you know where the Grange is. I said, yeah, I belong to the Grange. And so she says, right across the street up with, I said, it used to be all woods. And it, it did, it was all woods yeah. up here. Uh -huh. And so and I, so she says, I'll put your name in. I said, because she did a lot of housework up here. Sure. So she put my name in and that's how I got up here. Oh, oh, and and how long have you been here? A couple. Of, I haven't been here too long. No, because no. I'm young. Yeah. yeah. So I. So she went. She, you were a member of the Grange. Grange. Yeah. I yes. Am. And yeah. how long have you been a member? Ever since I moved there. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Oh, from from the Cape. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that well, was that's nice. And where were you living in the Cape? Where I, did you retire? Bastable. In Bastable. Yeah. yeah. I worked down the area. So how did it feel to come back to your wonders? Yeah. Yeah. Because the city, I knew the old timers, you know, but yeah. the young ones, I mean, I learned afterwards that because I went to work for the bank, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. Then they'd come in and I'd say to them, gee, I knew your mother and father, which is true, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, do you have a lot of childhood uh, of friends still living in well, the Well, there's some of them, a lot so, of them passed away, though. Right. Yeah. And Don't it, forget, I'm 88 years old, you know. <laughs> you never know at the way you were lifting that dog food. <laughs> have an old timer. Now, how do you get? To, do you drive into? Oh yeah, I still drive. Stop and shop. Yeah, well, my, my license. I. You have to go when you get a certain age. You got to go every year to get a. Mm -hmm. you, you know. Mm -hmm. and, okay. And you've been okay. So but, did you? Uh, the first time I went for my license, it was cute. The guy up front and says, "Would you learn how to drive?" I said. Oh, I drove a tractor on the farm. It was <laughs> <laughs> because I was 16 years old, you couldn't get your license. Oh, right? yeah, yes, yes. That's right. Still. Yeah, it's this thing. But did you, you you were responsible for doing a lot of the tractor driving, or you just did it? No, I did it because that's where I learned. I wanted to learn how to drive mm -hmm. because my brother Frankie was, he ended up being the mechanic anyway, so. That worked out well then, didn't it? Huh? That worked out real well to that's have right. all the different yeah. talents. That's right. For sure. Now, did your father teach you how to drive, or did you just kind of figure it out? Oh, we used to sneak all on the thing. We used to sneak. <laughs> he used to put the keys on the, in the in the kitchen. You know, that was a riot. And you would but, sneak and get the keys and yeah, go ride. My brother Frankie. Both oh of us. my! <laughs> on, the on the tractor. On the tractor. Yeah. Yeah. So how many acres on the farm did you have? Thirty. Thirty acres. Oh my yeah. gosh. That was yeah. nice. He had a big farm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, every every summer we used to have to go up the woods because what he used to do is that he'd cut the wood for the winter, you know, and he had a lot of wooded area, and we used to have to go up there and because then he'd trim them, and then he they he had a guy from Franklin they used to come and mm -hmm. saw them all to, for Small fireplaces. Pieces, right. And did your house, did you heat your house mostly by the fireplace, or did you... Oh, well, yeah, my mother had a fireplace in her house. Mm -hmm. yeah. In fact, my father had it built. He had a fellow come out from Boston, and he was a mason, so he oh. built a fireplace for my father in the living room. Now, is that house still standing? Yeah, it's still standing. That house is still there? Yeah, it's right next to the old schoolhouse. Isn't that amazing that yeah. it's still there? Yeah. And then my brothers, of course, built houses themselves down the street. Okay. Because my father gave us all a lot of land, and I sold mine to my nephew, and he built a house there. Yeah. So there's a, oh, there's a whole group of oh, yeah. Candelas that live yeah. right there on Myrtle. And yeah, well, they, and a couple of them are not Candelas because they belong to my sister. You know, she got married, right? Okay. <laughs> Well, that's nice that you have that extended family so close. Oh, yeah, we have. So you can get together yeah. and, and for holidays and things. That's it. Now, I think you were telling me um, before that um, a little story about how your mother learned how to can all of this uh, produce. That oh, was yeah, because see, my mother couldn't read. And she wanted to learn how to do that, right? But the, this Mrs. Riley, she was a cook for the people across the street, 
and she came out of Boston, and she used to come over and get the vegetables for my mother. And so she, my mother used to say, what do you do with all this? She said, oh, I can them. She said, oh, you do? What did, she didn't know what she meant by can. She says, my mother said, what do you mean by can? And she says, I put them in jars. So she had some of the jars. She says, like in this, she says, oh yeah, those are the ones I use. So she's the one that taught my mother how to do it. Because, I mean, we were just kids, and so we didn't know, you know. Right. Yeah. 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 Mrs. Riley was a cook for the D.W. Dunn. There used to be a summer home down the street, from uh, right across from the old city little schoolhouse. Mm -hmm. And he, he had I don't know, six or seven children, but his wife died when they were young, so he had hired a cook and a maid mm -hmm. to take care of the children. So he lived in Dorchester, and he only used to come out there for the summer months. Wow, that's mm -hmm. great. And uh, so Mrs. Riley was the cook. When she knew my mother had a farm, she used to come up and get vegetables. And she's the one that taught my mother how to do it, you know. It sounds like a, a, a great sense of community where everybody it was, uh, it was, helped really. everybody else and, it did. and taught people things and shared things that's and right. kind of everybody looked after everybody else. And well, it that's sounds like, like a wonderful street, community. Frank Harding bought the, bought the place and uh, what you call it. And he was great because, I mean, he could... He knew all the people in Norfolk, mm -hmm. you know. And yeah. my father was a barber. A lot of them started coming up the house because he ended up closing his barber shop in East Boston. He brought the chair back and mm -hmm. put it on the sun porch. So they used to come over there and get a haircut. Oh, that's <laughs> good. Isn't that good. worked out. Now, mm -hmm. would he cut your hair too, growing oh, up? Oh, we all, all the kids. We all had. had shingles. You don't remember the shingles in the back years ago? No. No, oh, okay. They used to cut them very short in the back, right? And, uh, and that's the, how the you worst part it was, but I had, see, on my father's side, he had wavy hair. My mother had real straight hair on my, on my father's side. So some, my youngest sister, when she was born, she, her hair was all curly. And my father used to trim it off, and we used to say, leave her alone. She's got nice curly hair. <laughs> and I'll come back here. <laughs> well, I'd say you have pretty, some curl in your hair, no, too. Yeah, but not. Mine was more or less straight like my mother's, uh -huh. but I had two sisters that had beautiful curly hair. Curly hair. Well, your hair really is beautiful. And, and would you believe all the boys had curly hair? Yeah. Of course. Of course. <laughs> the boys Isn't that always yes. the way it yeah. is? Yeah. The boys get the curly hair and the, and the girls get the straight I just have to get a curve it, right? <laughs> well, you have beautiful hair now. I've got plenty of it anyway. But yes, you At do. At least I didn't go bald. <laughs> no, you did not. You did my not. My father didn't either. Really? My father and mother both had a lot of hair. Oh, yeah, that's lucky. wonderful. Yeah. Very lucky. Well, it sounds like he was a wonderful man that you have wonderful, fond memories I do. of growing up in. I'm so glad that you shared them with us. We so really lucky. appreciate it. Thank yes. you so much. That's all right. My thank pleasure. Yeah, it was good. Nice meeting all of you. Oh, yeah. thank you And so we'll see much. you at Stop and Shop. Yeah, thank <laughs> you.